Um, this is the manifestation of the hypovolemic shock post hysterectomy. Uh, in this case, actually, the woman has undergone a hysterectomy due to dysfunctional uterine bleeding, and she is feeling unwell right now. So you will go to the cubicle and you will start talking to the patient. You will find the patient is confused. Sometimes she is not conscious. Sometimes she is confused. Sometimes she is talkative. It depends and it can differ from one candidate to another and one time to another. Generally, we know the same approach. We will introduce ourselves to the patient and then uh, look at the patient uh, identity if she is not uh, answering you. She may be like moaning. This means that she is responsive or she is conscious. Uh, so you will look at the identity right now uh, and then excuse yourself uh, look at the monitor you will find for example the oxygen is low you will ask about any smoke or cough she will tell you no or the examiner will tell you no doctor then give high flow oxygen via the under breathing mask ask the patient what happened um, she will, may not answer you okay so now I mean this means that I have to do the ABC by myself if the patient is not answering you uh, okay now I'm going uh, I give oxygen right now uh, right now I'm going to move to the breathing portion I'm going to uh, listen to the chest expose the chest listen to the chest quickly um, you will find no wheeze no crepitations here okay uh, so the breathing is normal right now I can see the blood pressure is dropping the blood pressure is 90 over 50 or 80 over 50 even so this means that there is a problem in the circulation I have to look for any external bleeding meanwhile I will be attaching two white bull cannulas to both hands uh, orange cannulas and if the orange is not present you can attach the gray cannula okay so uh, and from one cannula take uh, like 20 milli of blood samples including full blood count liver and kidney function test clotting profile cross match and blood group for use of blood and from the other side you will possibly attach one liter of pre-warmed hartman solution always remember this one liter of pre-warmed hartman solution for any hypovolemic shock meanwhile i'll be looking for any signs of external bleeding there is no signs of external bleeding okay this means that there could be another uh, bleeding so i have to expose the relevant site the relevant site i know that this patient had hysterectomy this means that the relevant site is the abdomen so i have to look at the wound site or the scar site i will find no external bleeding on the scar site okay uh, by the way, this patient, there is a urinary catheter attached to this patient. So after looking at the abdomen, I will look at the urinary catheter and I will find in the bag there, there could be dark urine. This means that the dark urine is due to the injury of the bladder. This means that a possibility of the hypovolemic shock is due to injury of the bladder. Okay, so right now I knew that after giving the fluid, I found that the blood pressure is improving but still below the normal. Attach one more liter to the other side, I mean to the other cannula. The blood pressure uh, didn't improve. Okay, this means that there is a possibility of internal bleeding. Okay, this means that I have to move the patient to the theater for re-exploration. One important thing, sometimes in the circulation we can consider the ECG or the uh, heart rate as a part of circulation and it can be shown on the monitor. In this patient you can find some tachycardia and you know that this tachycardia could be due to the hypovolemic shock as reflex tachycardia. Okay, um, this is very important. So <clears throat> in, in usually we include the ECG or uh, the heart rate uh, as a part of the C. So whenever you find any problem in the ECG or the heart rate, always uh, mention or revise it in the C portion. So see that I say that I can see that my patient is tachycardiac. Okay, uh, it's usually sinus tachycardia as reflex tachycardia due to the hypovolemia or the blood loss. Okay, so right now, what's your next step? I will move my patient to the operation theater for re-expiration. The examiner will ask you, doctor, what's your diagnosis? My patient is in hypovolemic shock. Uh, why, doctor, hypovolemic shock? Because number one, uh, the blood pressure was low. Number two, the pulse rate was high. The patient was in tachycardia. Number three, you can also, if you find any tachypnea, you will say that my patient is tachypnic. And sometimes it can be associated with hypothermia. Um, one more thing, uh, on the same man, sometimes you can put cold periphery, okay, so, uh, and sometimes pallor too. So if, 
whenever you, you notice any cold periphery or, or pallor, always mention it and always this comes in the circulation. Okay, so the circulation, you are monitoring the blood pressure, you are monitoring the pulse rate and you're feeling the extremities too. And look at the ECG too. So the examiner will ask you why hypovolemic shock, number one, hypotension, number two, tachycardia, number three, tachypnea, number four, could be hypothermia too, number five, say about the cold preference and sometimes the pallor too. Okay, this one be one reason. Okay, what's the next step? I will move the patient to the re-exploration in the theater. Okay, what could be the reason of behind the hypovolemia? You can say that internal organ damage. Uh, I could see dark urine, so this means that there could be injury to the bladder. If you don't see any dark urine, just say internal organ damage. Okay, um, okay. What could be the other reason? In case the examiner asks you what could be the other reason, you can say thromboembolism or thrombus, and this could be due to pulmonary embolism maybe. Just say thromboembolism. But usually she will not ask you about the other reason. Definitely the most important reason is hypovolemic shock because this is a major operation, and after any major operation, the patient will likely... Uh, develop hypovolemic shock, especially uh, in hysterectomy, there is a high chance of bladder injury. So this is the main important thing. So this is like any hypovolemic shock, and then any hypovolemic shock, you usually follow the ABC. In the problem in the C, you will attach two white bore cannulas, uh, take sample from one and give flow to the other one. Meanwhile, you will be observing any external signs of bleeding. If you don't find any external bleeding, move to the relevant part. Uh, the operation site uh, if you find nothing outside it is mean that there could be internal bleeding meanwhile you will be feeding the extremities for any cold preference or pallor and looking at the pulse rate and the ECG this is the circulation portion uh, and this is the whole station by the way and you cannot move to the D as long as the C is impaired I mean always address the problem and move to the next step otherwise you cannot step to the next one